Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So this is Star Wars The Mandalorian, season one, episode one. Get your Disney Plus ready, timestamp to zero, and then press play now. So when this show was first announced, I don't remember if I was entirely on board with it. I was really crazy about the Disney Wars era. Coming off of uh, Disney Wars Awakens. <laughs> Looking back on that, that was a big joke. But uh, I think this show kind of surprised me with what it was going for. It was original, had original characters, new planets, new lore. Unfortunately, I think by season two, we get a lot more cameos and stuff, which is fine, I guess, but it kind of started to fall apart at that point. It was advertised as a Western in space. So that kind of got my attention right out the gate. Of course, people try to appear in the boat far. Well, far always looked cool, but he was a shitty character. It doesn't do anything interesting. Even the EU doesn't do shit. Like I never understood why I, why I killed these guys. <laughs> Guess they want to show him being ruthless. And this guy is got the bounty on. It's kind of annoying. But what I do like about this is that they kept them mysterious in the first season. Because what I'm talking about was like aliens speaking English, I'm like. <clears throat> I was gonna bring up the expanded universe because it's very rare to see an alien then speak the native language. I obviously can't do that in the books, but some of my KOTOR is always subtitles. I always spoke in their language. This guy, the blue dude, looks like he belongs in freaking Star Trek. I hear that season four of the show has been canceled in favor of some dumb movie. And that's it. That's it's going to bite you in the ass. They literally launched Disney Plus with this show. Now they're going to cancel the potential fourth season to make some another dumb movie. 
to the amount of idea to kill off all the good cards people gave a damn about. Now they got nothing left. It's like, but you can't take a character that was designed for television and just throw them on the big screen. I think it's going to work. It's never going to work. So I was waiting for him to do something to that blue dude and like you get this blue guy to shut up. The only thing I really want in these shows, I need some planet labels so I know where we are. I do it in the games, no problem. But like I need to know what planet I'm on. It's a little label on the bottom of the screen is fine. It doesn't take that much effort. And then with Disney film, you just never know.
I'm waiting for this. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, the carbonite. This is the Bounty Hunter Guild. They got things like this all over the galaxy. So it's nice seeing this in live action in particular. Rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Thought he was an interesting character. But I didn't understand why this was set post Return of the Jedi until. Until the end of season two when Luke showed up, my god, I get it now. <laughs> It's like shows like this start to open the doorway for other pockets of Star Wars to be explored. Like to see him walk into this market here and do something similar in uh, Star Wars Outlands. People will probably know him. they weren't crying about this and that. But like when you first meet Kay, she's on this planet. I don't remember what it's called, but. You have to walk around on the planet and the market and whatnot and get to know the character. Who would have thought? I really get excited when I see classic stormtroopers in Star Wars. Especially when their armor is dirty and rusted. Reminds me of the uh, Imperial Remnant from uh, 
a Jedi, a Jedi Knight games. Like those odds. Like, granted, I haven't seen season three yet. Aside from that episode with that dopey doctor. I didn't bother watching anything else after that. What I understand, the season was kind of crap. Doesn't mean they can't come back from that with another season. No, I'll tell you right now, a Mandalorian film ain't gonna work. We wanna do that it was like when the series is ending. To wrap everything up, that could work, I guess. But let's say we're just making make another making a film and canceling the fourth season, which could do pretty well if the movie's good. That's a mistake. I know Pedro Pascal is busy with other projects like Mister Fantastic, and uh, he can last on longer Joel. And, or two, she's last of us. So you got to worry about that. He ain't going to make it fast. If he's alive at the end of the first episode, I'll be impressed. But he ain't going to last the whole season, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> he's, he's doing a voice for his character, but I guarantee he's not in the suit at the time. So it's not like you have to track him down too often. You guys get a stunt on him. But I love how this show takes its time to uh, introduce us to this new aspect of Star Wars. I mean, it's not new to me. Like I know, I know a Mandalorian, mostly from the older public. It's obviously a lot different now. I think the one aspect they missed about Mandalorians in this particular show is that Mandalorians are freaking warriors. Right back in the days of Kotor, the Mandalorian Wars and all that stuff, so much lore in there.
No, I like seeing this flashback to uh, Mandalorian's past. They don't give too much away. They just show enough that piques your interest. I don't think we see any more flashbacks after this season, though. And they just focus a little too much, I think, on the kid. And this little dude that said I have spoken, <laughs> kind of funny. Kind of a shame they killed him off. At least they show that they got stakes in the show, which is always important to do.
I mean, on first glance, I would assume this is Tatooine, but there's not enough sand for it to be Tatooine. So it's a clearly different plan. This is why I said that I want plant labels. We're jumping around in space here. I feel like this show is another example of having cool characters around lightsabers. I'm like, when is this cool to see some old school blaster shootouts around the force, around lightsabers? Now, unfortunately, I think they kept the kid around too long in this show because I think this show was at its strongest when it was a bounty hunter series. And it just turned into a babysitting show. And uh, To me, it's not what Star Wars is. I don't want to blame it being under Disney banner, but you see a lot of this babysitting stuff a lot with the 
Disney Wars here. Like Bad Batch and Rebels, the Space Aladdin show. A lot of annoying little kids running around with grown ass adults. Like when this part came up and you saw little Yoda, I'm like, I think I understand what they're doing now. I figured it seemed like we were going to get something unique, and the uh, first season did not disappoint. I think that's after the first season that I started getting a little concerned. I started hearing about Josh showing up, I'm like, uh, I don't think we should be doing that in this show. And uh, again, the confirmation of a movie about the Mandalorian, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You can't take a television. Like, characters specifically, specifically created for television and all on the big screen. It's never going to work. Unfortunately, they're going to find out the hard way at the box office. Don't get me wrong, it's going to make money, but they can draw the numbers that they're expecting to right now. 